Hey guys, Luna here. Welcome back to another Skyrim brand new console mod video. Today's video, as always, we have eight brand new console mods for you guys to look at, four for PS4 and four for Xbox One. Before we start, I want to talk about today's second video, which is not going to be another eight console mods. It's going to be a showcase of just one mod, and that is Moonlight Tales mod, which came out yesterday. The mod is a cool one, and I always wanted to try a single mod showcase, so let me know what you think of it once it's out. This video, however, we have eight mods to look through, so let's just get started on number one. Our first mod of the day is Anti-Gravity Spell. All the mod does is add an Anti-Gravity Spell to a chest next to Heimskirt in Whiterun. The spell needs no explanation, it disables gravity for whoever you cast it on, and it sends them flying into the air, and of course they take a huge amount of falling damage. A cool mod to use on your enemies and anyone you find really annoying. Our second mod of the day is the Witcher 3 Detlef Coat. The mod simply adds the Detlef Coat from the Witcher 3 as a male only armour into Skyrim in the form of an armour, boots and gloves. It can easily be crafted under the forge under the leather section and in terms of damage resistance all the pieces are stronger than any vanilla light armour so are very powerful. Of course they can also be refined and enchanted as well for better protection. Overall a cool armour mod for your male characters if you're a fan of the Witcher 3. Next up we have Call Armies 2, a Dremora army mod. This mod is an add-on to the Call Armies mod we showcased not long ago. The mod adds the ability to now summon a Dremora army into the game. Equipping the ring that you get in a chest in Dragon's Reach will add the ability to conjure several things. A regular Dremora army and the Zaster Krulag Dremora army. The regular Dremora summons all the regular types of Dremora that attack you and the Zaster Krulag summons the giant legendary Dramora Zaster Krulag to attack you and you can summon multiple ones of him if you want to as well. Although he is very powerful so be careful. You also get a spell to banish the Zaster Krulag and you can use the regular expel NPC spell that comes with the regular summon armies mod to get rid of just those regular Dramora. Overall a fun addition to the call armies mod, after all who doesn't like fighting Dramora? Next up we have Dwarven Luggage. When Sindirian entered into Blackreach, he didn't go alone. Years later, the Dragonborn can find the Dwarven Luggage still awaiting within the depths of Blackreach by its former master. During Sindirian's quest to find more Nurn roots, he happened by a strange Dwemer device looking much like a spider with a chest on top of it. He found it to be operational and took it along with him to help carry his ingredients and other essentials. When Sindirian met his untimely death in Blackreach, the faithful Dwarven Luggage stayed at his side. So what does the mod add? Well you get Dwarven Luggage. It adds a Dwarven Spider Chest that follows you around and helps hold a near limitless amount of weight within its interdimensional space. He doesn't count as a follower so feel free to add any follower you like and summon him at the same time. You can tell the Dwarven Luggage to wait for you or he can follow you around. The Dwarven Luggage has a summon spell which allows you to call it to you along with all the gear you stash on it. And of course all the gear you put into this mod is safe so you'll never lose any of your important stuff that goes into it. The Dwarven Luggage can be found with Cinderian's remains when you enter the field laboratory in Blackreach. And while this is a simple mod, I really, really like this one. Next up, we have another simple one though called Immortal Essential Followers. All it does is make any of your followers and companions in game immortal. A lot of follower mods come with this, but plenty of followers and companions in the vanilla game, especially the mercenary type ones you find in inns and pubs and stuff, they usually are unessential. Well, with this mod enabled, you no longer have to worry about your non-essential NPCs followers dying on you. And this include and this includes companions as well, like dogs. Our sixth mod and second last mod of the day is a player home. Now the mod is made by Eleonora, so before we even look at it, we know it's going to be very well made. The mod adds a small shack opposite Honingbrew Meadery, with tons of storage, unique items, and most workstations. Now I have the People of Skyrim mod installed, so that adds in loads of stuff around Whiterun, and this clashes actually with this mod. However, I don't think the clash is too big, and it just adds pretty much a tent into the corner of the garden, and I think it fits in okay. However, I have showed you what it looks like with and without the People of Skyrim installed as well, just so you can decide, but I like it with it installed. So we're going to take a look at all the house's features. You can safely store away and display Dragon Priest masks, display tons of unique items in the game, reset crafted items to re-enchant and temper them, a reset font that lets you remove enchanted and smithing upgrades from player created items, you also get all vanilla workstations and storage areas, awesome clutter and some new shiny textures, cool looking custom storage, space for all your books, the house comes with custom music which I actually really like. The bed gives you the well-rested spouse bonus. Outhouse and small plantable garden. Now this is the bit that kind of clashes with the people of Skyrim mod, so that's up to you whether you want to have that installed. Lots of display space, some are free and some are predetermined. You even get a spot for a horse. 
The house also has a day and night cycle, so when it's dark at night the house on the inside is much darker. The house is fully nav meshed for your friends and companions convenience, and obviously all storage in the house is set to no respawn, and so that way none of your stuff in your storage will ever get lost if you put it into storage. So those are just some of the main features, of course it comes with all the other basics that you need for a player home. To get into the house you first have to go to the previous owner in Helgen. According to Eleonora they got into a bit of a scaly situation, and by that it means they were killed by the dragon at the start of the game in Helgen, so you can find the keys on their burnt body. Overall this house, while very small, is without a doubt one of the best decorated and highly detailed homes in the game, modded or unmodded. The house has so much stuff for such a small space, and it even comes with custom music, which is really cool, and it's definitely worth checking out. The Smeltdown mod allows you to break down most of the unenchanted weapons and armour, and some clutter in the game. Metallic items can be broken down at a smelter, and non-metallic items can be broken down at the tanning racks. Pretty much every unenchanted non-unique weapon and armour can be broken down as well, excluding things made of fur. Jewellery is now able to be broken down as well. You can smelt them down into ingots at the smelter and pry the gems out of the tanning rack. Also forsworn weapons, bone mould armour, along with human and troll skulls can be broken down into bone meal at the grain mills. Yield amounts vary between items, and for the most part, you're not going to get back quite as much as you put in. This isn't always the case, especially when it comes to items that can easily be exploited, such as Daedric items. Items will only show up at the smelter or tannin rack if you have at least one of the item and don't currently have it equipped, because it's something that can't be resolved without a script. However, keep in mind that favourited items can still be broken down. Overall, a cool mod that makes smelting in the game more dynamic, and this mod is only part of a series of mods to make crafting and smithing more effective in-game, and I think it definitely does that. Our final mod of the day is called Zachary Dodoa Keen, which if you translate means Sword of the Dragonborn. When you equip this sword, you will unlock a special shout called Rage of the Ancients, which we will look at in a second. The weapon's damage is more powerful than a Dragonborn Greatsword, so the base weapon is incredibly powerful to use even before you use the shout Rage of the Ancients. The shout itself, once you use it, does four things. One, it enchants the sword with a damage boost based on the number of dragon souls you have. It adds a dragon aspect effect with a small twist, so you have this cool dragon effect which makes you kind of glow red which is really nice. You summon a super powerful army of 5 ancient dragonborn to obliterate your foe, and they have just the regular dragon aspect with them. Lasts for 5 minutes and they are very strong. They use shouts, they attack things, and even when I was attacking this fart, none of them died. So I don't know how much health and how much damage they do, but they are very powerful. Finally, it adds a blood scale effect, which is cool as this sword is way more powerful than the blood scale blade, so you can kill things with that energy burst pretty much in one hit. If that wasn't enough, the sword will also react to shouts that are used while it's wielded. Fire Breath enchants the sword with fire damage, Frost Breath frost damage, Storm Call enchants it with shock damage, Ice Farm enchants it with the chill round effect, Unrelenting Force enchants the sword with a knockback effect, the Dismay enchantment will add fear to the sword, Dragon Rend enchantment will add the Dragon Bane effect. The enchantment will last for the duration of the cooldown and subject to change with the use of Amulet of Talos, but not with mods that alter shout cooldowns. And all of these effects will be disabled as soon as you sheath your weapon as well. The sword can be found in a chest outside the entrance to Helgen if you're looking for it. If you fast travel to Helgen, head right to the next gate and you will find it next to the gate just down the path a little bit. Overall, this sword is the perfect weapon for any Dragonborn character. Well guys, there we have it, 8 brand new console mods for Skyrim Special Edition. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did, like, comment and subscribe and I will see all of you guys later with a new type of video which is a showcase for just one mod, but a cool mod, Moonlight Tales on Xbox One. So let me know for your feedback for that when it's out and I will see all of you guys next time.